So today we are going to talk about proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Uh, just as a little review, um, if we have a number is even, then it's divisible by 2. We can also then state, if a number is divisible by 2, then it is even. That is the converse of this if-then statement. Okay, we're going to use that in this section. We discovered that a quadrilateral has certain properties. Um, then it must be a parallelogram. Okay, so we're going to state that if it has x and y, then it must be a parallelogram, thus proving that it is a parallelogram. So, for example, we have theorem 6.8. If both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are what, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Well, we talked about yesterday that if we have this parallelogram and that this side will be congruent to this side and this side is congruent to this side, then it's a parallelogram. Okay? So therefore, we can state that if both pairs of the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Theorem 6.9 tells us if an angle of a quadrilateral is blank, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Well, we learned yesterday that it's supplementary to both of its consecutive angles. If an angle of a quadrilateral is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So, if we were to take a look at this angle here, and we'll label this angle A, and the angle B, and angle C, if we can say that A plus C is supplementary, and A plus B is supplementary, then we can state that this object is indeed a parallelogram. Okay. If both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite angles, we talked about that yesterday, that we have these opposite angles. So if AD and BC are congruent, then we can say that that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if we say that A is congruent to D and B is congruent to C, then we can say that this figure is indeed a parallelogram. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral blank, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Again, we talked about this yesterday, such that if we have some diagonals and they bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if we have, again, some parallelogram, okay, and here's our parallelogram. If we state that we draw the, the diagonals of this parallelogram and we show that this section is congruent to this section and that this is congruent to this, we can say that this entire figure is indeed a parallelogram. If one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are both congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if we take a look at another parallelogram, and we have A, B, C, and D, and we show 
that CD is parallel to AB and that CD is congruent to AB, then we can prove that this figure here is again a parallelogram. So we can use any of these theorems 6.8 through 6.12 or 6.12 to prove that that any object is indeed a parallelogram. Again, I would have these written down in my notebook. I would put these in that section of your notebook that we have marked down for theorems. Because these are going to be weapons in our arsenal as we go through these parallelogram proofs. So, using the diagram at the right and theorems that we just talked about. If AB is congruent to DC, that's the opposite side, okay, if it's congruent to DC, and BC is congruent to AD, then we know that this is a parallelogram. If angle A, angle A right here, plus angle B is equal to 180 degrees, and angle A, again, and angle D is equal to 180, then this indeed also, again, is a parallelogram. And again, we're just using these theorems and to our advantage. If angle A is congruent to blank and angle blank is congruent to D, okay, then it's a parallelogram. And our theorem says it's its opposite angles. So in this case, we need to say that angle A is congruent to angle C. And angle D needs to be congruent to angle B. Then we know that this object is indeed a parallelogram. If side AE is blank and side BE is congruent to blank, B, E. Then what happens? Then it's a parallelogram. But wh where's E? Well, E is going to be our center of our two diagonals. So if A to E is congruent to C to E, in other words, this segment here is congruent to this segment here, then we can say that that, that is the first part of our par parallelogram proof. We must then have B, E is congruent to E, D. And that's the second half of that bisector theorem. If side B, C is congruent to blank and is parallel, then we know we're dealing with that theorem that says if the sides are congruent and parallel, then we are proving a parallelogram. So B, C must be congruent to A, D, and also must be parallel to A, D. So this side here and this side here are both congruent and parallel. And our last one, if C, D, if C, D, so this segment here uh, is congruent to blank and C, D is bl parallel to blank, then A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. C, D must be congruent and parallel to its opposite side. So we're comparing it to B, A. And that allows us to prove that parallelogram is indeed a parallelogram. So, when we look at problems like this that are algebraic, it says find the value of y. 
so that PQRS is indeed a parallelogram. Well, we says why? Well, we know that the opposite sides must be congruent. So we know that y is equal to x plus 2. We also know that we have these two sides that are opposite and need to be congruent. So we have 2x plus 1 is equal to 3x minus 5. If I add 5 to both sides, I get 2x plus 6 is equal to 3x. I then subtract 2x from both sides. I get 6 is equal to x. Well, we found x, but that, again, is not what they're asking. They're asking for what y is. So we must take this value and put it back into the other equation that is solving for y. And we get y equals, and I substitute 6 in for x. I get 6 plus 2. So y, in this case, is 8. Use the diagram at the right for what values of x and y must EFGH have to be a parallelogram. So I'd like you to take these now and set up your equations, okay, and solve for x and y. This will be your homework assignment for this section. All you need to do is walk through the steps to get there and we will discuss this problem tomorrow in class. That is all on this section when we talk about the congruencies and proofs of parallelograms.